The ROG Nook 970 is the smallest gaming PC I've ever tried. Smaller than an ITX build? Yup, smaller than ITX. It's slightly smaller than most consoles. Now, given its size, you might be wondering if it's a legit gaming PC, not just some hardware thrown together and then gaming got slapped onto it for marketing. And it is legit. I played Jedi Survivor, a notoriously not well-optimized game, and I was able to play it at 4K resolution. Sounds great, but I know what you're thinking. What the heck is a Nook? The technical, historical answer is that Nook stands for Next Unit of Computing, pioneered by Intel to be a desktop PC format with a very small footprint. Recently, ASUS took over the Nook line from Intel, but other companies can also make Nooks. The practical answer is that at its best, the Nook combines the benefits of a laptop size, portability, ease of use, just turn on and go, no installation or assembly required, with the advantages of a desktop. Better performance, not throttled by power or heat limitations. A Nook can be the best of both worlds, a sleek top performer. At its worst though, a Nook has the downsides of a laptop, thinking about loaded with bloatware, can't upgrade it, buggy as hell, underpowered specs, without any of the benefits of a desktop. A bad Nook is like Frankenstein's monster, cobbled together from weird parts that don't fit well together. So which one is the ROG Nook 970? Let's do sizing first, since our primary reason for choosing a Nook is its small footprint that you can tuck in anywhere. The 970 is 270 by 180 by 50 millimeters with a 2.5 liter case. For reference, a PS5 is 390 by 104 by 260 millimeters. So even though the 970 is larger than most Nooks, it is smaller than a PS5 and can easily fit basically anywhere you want to jam it, say under or behind your monitor. There are some nooks that allow you to mount directly to the back of a monitor via a VESA mount. So that's super clean, but that's not an option with the 970. Still, the 970 is small and sleek enough to fit in most anywhere. And you can have it in either horizontal or vertical modes. Although I suspect most people will have it in vertical as it does look more distinctive and it has a thinner profile in this orientation. The 970 is small, especially compared to a traditional ATX build. The chassis itself looks premium and black, has a little lighting with the ROG logo, and then a little more styling with the front panel. It looks aggressive enough not to be boring, but plain enough to fit directly onto most desks. One thing I wasn't expecting is that the power button doesn't light up if the 970 is plugged in. It only lights up when the Nook is actually on. I can see that being useful if you keep it in your bedroom and you absolutely hate having any lights on while sleeping. It is a little confusing when you use it for the first time though. Natakot ako na nasira ako na siya when I first plugged it in because nothing was lighting up. From the external hardware package, let's go to the internal software package. One of the things I hate about laptops is that they are basically all OEM computers, so you're stuck with whatever crap the brand decided to preload onto it. Unlike desktops, where if you build it, then you can install a fresh, unadulterated version of Windows. Thank you, Jesus. This was not my experience with the 970. Hindi nagparamdam si McAfee, Kapersky, or any other of our best friends that usually say hi with OEM builds. There was very little bloatware, and I had to dig pretty deep to find any at all. Eventually, I did find that Armory Crate, Asus's all-in-one software for driver updates, customization, etc was running in the background even though it doesn't show up in the startup list of Task Manager. And this was a little sneaky but I'm willing to give it a pass since Armory Crate is occasionally useful and not out of place in an ASUS ROG PC. And in another miracle, the 970 actually got me to appreciate Windows 11. 
Apparently, Win11 allows you to do BIOS updates straight in the OS. And it was with the 970 that I experienced this for the first time. Normally, a BIOS update desperately involves trying to get into the BIOS before Windows boots up. The BIOS is the basic OS of your mobile. And then navigating through a creaky, unfamiliar interface. And then telling the BIOS to look for the update on a USB that you may or may not have correctly prepared. It's a much more convenient, comfortable, and dummy-proof process if done through Windows. Just don't turn off the PC and pray you don't have a power failure during the BIOS update. Now, the OS itself was rock solid in all of the times I used the 970. I bring this up because just anecdotally, I find that the OS on laptops to be in general, more buggy than desktops. My laptop is certainly more prone to BSODs than my desktop. But I had no stability issues at all with the 970. Which brings us to performance. On paper, the 970 is packed with top-of-the-line hardware. It sports an Intel Core Ultra 9 185H CPU, basically top-of-the-line, and a laptop aka 4070 mobile. This is where I got a little nervous for the gaming PC claim because the 4070 is not a bad card. But the laptop versions of GPUs are usually, or all the time, slower than the desktop versions. And that's just the nature of the beast. Things have to be pared down due to size and power constraints. The whole point of a Nook or a laptop is that you simply don't have the space or carrying capacity for a huge ass 2-3 to three slot GPU. So 4070 laptop GPU is decent, but I was interested to see how it would do. Rounding out the CPU and GPU are 32GB of DDR5, 5600MHz of RAM, and the 1TB M.2 SSD with usable space of 952GB. These are both good choices for a high-performance build. Note that these are the specs that you will get if you buy in the Philippines. The RAM and SSD specs change per region, so the info posted on the ROG site might not be accurate for you. So we got impressive hardware all around. Did real-world performance live up to those paper specs? Yes, it did. I mostly tested using Jedi Survivor, which is a demanding game, made all the more so because the PC port was not, and is still not, optimized. So running it on a PC, you have to have some serious hardware. And run it well, the 970 did. I played the game at 4K, and while there were some scenes where frame rates dropped a little bit, especially in the opening levels, which are wide, so you can see a lot of things happening in the background, Overall, the 970 was beefy enough to allow me to continue playing at 4K. And to be honest, when I shifted to playing on my regular desktop, my personal setup could only manage 2K. And I missed playing the game at 4K, which is how I played it with the 970. I did have it at 4K with DLSS on, frame gen on, and RTX off. I wanted to have RTX on, but performance was just taking too much of a hit for it to be playable for me. Summing it up, performance was very good. Better than I expected from such a small package. It was really when I was hours into enjoying Jedi Survivor that I mentally shifted gears and acknowledged in my head that yes, the 970 is indeed truly a gaming PC. Does that performance come at a cost though? Specifically, does the machine get hot and noisy when it has to work hard? Amazingly, it doesn't. First on noise, I didn't hear anything coming from this thing, whether on idle or on load. It was so quiet, I had to check to make sure that the fans were actually working. This is especially encouraging because most people will probably have this in a bedroom or a living room not necessarily a dedicated gaming room. So shared spaces with other people who might be bothered by the noise, even if you're not, because you might be wearing headphones while gaming, for example. You don't need to worry. You won't bother anyone with the 970. On temps, for idle, I was seeing around 51 degrees for the GPU and 63 degrees for the CPU. On load, GPU temps would go to 70 and then just stay there. I never saw it break above 70. For the CPU, there was more variance and on load, I saw it go between 83 to 90 degrees. GPU temps on this thing 
are solid. 70 degrees for on-load for a demanding game, that's pretty good performance. For the CPU, 90 is a little toasty, but it never stayed there for a long time. And to be honest, CPUs are supposed to handle those temperatures even for prolonged periods. Overall, temps and noise levels on this thing are excellent. Very impressive, especially if you're used to chonky gaming laptops that really get hot and loud when you fire them up. Now, if this were a desktop, it would be a no-brainer to go with the 4070 Super, but this is a Nook, much closer to a laptop in terms of form factor, so upgrades are not an option. Open! Damn it! Open! Except for the SSD and RAM. Those can be upgraded for SSDs. There are three available M.2 PCIe Gen 4 slots, and the RAM is upgradable to 2x32. Actually, opening up the 970 is not as straightforward as a regular desktop PC, but it's doable. This, for me, was the most nerve-wracking part of the review as I wanted to see how hard it was to open, but at the same time, I didn't want to have to end up buying the demo unit of the 970 because I actually broke it while opening it. Kaya naman buksan, but if you're doing it for the first time, my advice is to go slow and if you feel pressure, back off. Which I guess is good advice for many things that you're doing for the first time, not just opening a Nook. Once open, the slots where you put in the SSDs and RAMs are easy to spot. So that's one instance where experiencing building desktop rigs comes in handy. Not being able to upgrade the CPU and GPU is the price you pay for this small size. It's good though that ROG was able to make room for upgrade paths which can add longevity to the 970, thinking more about the storage here, and add performance depending on what applications you'll use it for. And for that one, I'm thinking of the RAM upgrade. To actually use the 970, you of course will need to connect peripherals. And here too, the 970 does not disappoint. You can read all of the specs for yourself, but the highlights for me we're having two display ports and one HDMI for a total of three possible monitor connections. When you get something with the specs of the 970, you'll probably want to have multiple monitors for work. And being able to hook up three monitors immediately to the 970 is fantastic. Very close already to what you would get with a high-end desktop. Also of note is that there is a Thunderbolt 4 Type-C port in the back for those users who need fast data transfers. For my own workflow, I really like the SD card reader in front. I've mentioned in the past why this is helpful for me when I have to transfer videos from my camera. What I don't like being located in front is the audio jack. Plugging in your speakers or headphones into the front is just another unsightly wire. It would have been nice if this could have been placed in the back so that the user could try to keep the front as uncluttered as possible. To be honest, I came into this review with neutral or even a slightly negative feeling about the 970. Neutral because while I appreciate what Nooks in general are trying to do, I am a desktop guy and bang for your buck, desktops are the way to go. And I don't mind if it's huge, I will find room for it on my desk. Slightly negative because sometimes I feel that niche products like these spoil us into becoming bad consumers. Those that demand everything without expecting any trade-offs. Yes, I want the fastest possible, but I also want it to be small, quiet, and it should look good too. That's a fantasy. There's always a trade-off. But when the consumer gets used to that hype, they get upset. We get upset when reality intrudes into that fantasy. So I started out as a skeptic, but after using the 970, I'm a believer. Gosh darn it. The 970 does pretty nearly pull off everything that it claims it will do. It's not the cheapest, in the Philippines, for the cheaper 760, that's an i7 with a 4060, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and 512 gigabytes of storage. The SRP is 109,000 pesos, and the 970 is pegged at 135,000 for SRP. 
This video dropped in July 2024 and the Nooks are currently still for pre-order, at least in the Philippines. Customers who order now will receive them next month, August. With the same amount of money, can you get a better performing desktop? Yes, straight up, no hesitation, you can. But if you need a well-optimized performance machine in a tight space that looks good, then the 970 fits that requirement perfectly. The built-in specs are high-end enough so that the 970 will serve you well even on a longer time frame, say between 3 to 5 years. And the parts you can upgrade add nicely to that potential longevity. And considering my mindset before starting this review, I really surprised myself that I wanted to give the 970 back to ASUS as quickly as possible because the longer I kept it, the more I was being tempted to keep it and replace my desktop with it. So really a 180 turn from where I started. I'm a really weak, weak man when it comes to resisting good hardware. Thanks for watching.